So now we're recording. So let me call the CV Fiber Governing Board, regular Governing Board meeting to order at 6.02. Are there any additions or changes to the agenda? Ray, I see a hand up. Yeah, I'd just like to move the uh, what's called officers' compensation at seven o'clock to um, prior to the 2023 budget. So move it up one. Will do. Understood. Can I add? Um, David, you have something? Yeah, I would like. I don't know if we can. It's not on the agenda, so I'm not sure. Can be added. Right now, I am the designated uh, CV5 delegate to Vicuda, and I would like it have a motion to have it moved to Janiel, um, an action item. We keep on missing this every, every month. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's, let's, we can, we can, we can add that. Let's add that after the, after the minutes and have that, have, get that, get that done and, and out of the way. I think that would be easy. Okay. Uh, is there any public comment? <clears throat> Hearing none, do we have um, meeting minutes to approve? I I think when I went to the no. website earlier, there were no minutes there for the previous meeting. Was I mistaken? Yeah. No, you're not. Uh, there was a little, I, I failed to follow up with uh, uh, with CVR or PC. I sent them the, the notes um, and never heard back from them. I don't know if they didn't get the recording or whatnot, but um, I'll follow up with you, Jerry, and maybe see, or actually, uh, Sybil, do, would you have time to do these minutes as well for the last meeting? Oh, I, I like, think Sybil's on mute, and I, I, I think Sybil's on mute, and um, we would need. I, I think why don't why don't we take this offline so that Sybil doesn't have to make the decision now? I don't know. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, let's take this offline and, and work that out. Okay, so then we can move into the treasurer's report and bills to pay. And we, uh, Ray, you're 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 aware of. Uh, yeah, you are. Okay, thank you. So there's no, there's no bills to pay for us to pay. I would like to go through the um, January through November profit and loss statement and invite your attention to several things. Uh, so first of all, our income, our total grant income, um, is six point six million dollars. And I'm going to uh, going to ask Jerry to uh, talk about this. Now this is through 30 November. I'll ask Jerry to talk about any changes since 30 November. Actually, so I want to make one comment. I think yeah. that we have don't we have to approve the um, NEK broadband invoice? Wasn't that bills to pay? Um, the the NEK I, that's one that I didn't approve. Yeah. Um, we, the executive committee would be the place for doing that if you don't have the authority to do it. But I think you have the authority to do it. Okay, I think Jerry approved it, so maybe yeah. we're good on it. I just I, I didn't want yeah. to miss the opportunity. I didn't think we can take it off the off this here. Um, then we have expenses. Uh, administration is this first category, and total administration through 30 November is two hundred fifteen thousand uh, dollars. That that includes accounting, insurance, salary and wages, etc. Uh, poll inventory services through this point. Uh, it's three hundred thirty thousand dollars. I think we have some bills that uh, we'll see a change in that coming up. Um, Pre-construction work, design one point three million. Make ready services six hundred thousand dollars. This is replacing poles, tree trimming, uh, etc. Uh, materials two point eight million dollars that we've expended to date. Total pre-construction of $4.7 million. Total expenses of $5.4 million. Uh, we have, uh, at this point in time, uh, revenues in excess of expenses of $1.2 million. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, and we have, uh, Funding, funding, funding requests that uh, let's see. We just, I'm going to get my numbers wrong. We have we have put in a request to get the remainder of our pre-construction grant funding. Um, we have to we have to basically invoice the VCBB. Uh, so we've done that to get 
the remainder of our pre-construction grant funding. And we have also invoiced the VCBB and received um, $5.8 million, I believe, in construction funding. Uh, so yes, we, we, ju just, we just got it. <laughs> so the, uh, the, uh, the money, is, money is in the bank to pay for construction. It's a good thing. Uh, which is a good segue into the construction update. And I probably should have started the meeting with this, but there's a, an, an immense thank you and congratulations to folks because we have started construction. And if you want to know where it is, it's in Callis and we've got 9,000 feet of strand that has been strung in, in CLO1, I believe. Is that correct, Janil? Yep. So, congratulations, folks. This is this is this is really monumental. Um, we're we're all extremely pleased. It's it's taken a lot of work, as you all know. Uh, so we are very, 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 very happy about that. Um, so, Janil, would you give us a bit of a update on where we where we are in construction and and just yeah. you know five minutes of, of, of what's going on. There's so much going on, but it things are happening. Yeah, I, I met with um, Tony, uh, who is the construction manager from NRCC today, and he confirmed that, uh, um, as, as Jerry stated, we've strong, used this as strong 9,000 uh, feet so far and are continuing with strand and lash. It'll take about two weeks to get through the, um, the scope of work for CLO1 um, that they have in their hands. And then they will be following that up with fiber. So strand and lash first, then fiber. In addition, they're starting the undergrounding um, for the permits that we have in Calus as well. Um, so the next the next step would be to look at the uh, to look at the cabinet site for Calus, and that's a scope of work that is um, most likely going to go to time and materials rather than uh, a flat fee. This is a conversation that we had today, so this is still work in progress. But we did receive our templates for the cabinet site. Um, and signed the the lease for it. So we're ready to go um, as soon as we finalize that scope of work for time and materials. I mean, that's where Any, we are with construction. Fantastic. Any additional questions uh, for Janiel? Let me see if I can pull up the the photograph that <laughs> that Levitt sent me, the the um, construction manager of Eustis sent me a picture of uh, of a of one of our trucks hanging fiber um, right outside the substation. I don't know if you can see that. Can you see that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, one of those muddy days. Yeah, right, exactly. So there's a picture is worth a thousand words. Um, they, they they're out, they're out there. They're in on North Callis Road today. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. That's 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 really good news. And also, I'll I'll add just as an aside, uh, Janiel is continuing moving forward on all the other things that need to be done so that construction can continue. Right. So so we're still doing make ready. We're still we're still moving our design through NRTC through the approval process at the state level, um, so that we have. The intention is to build a big enough bank that when the springtime comes, we can get two contractors working and that there'll be enough work for them to be engaged fully um, and, and get, get a, uh, a large chunk of our construction done next next season. We so have, that, that's uh, what we're yeah, we at. We have 12 licenses so far from WEC. At, at about 400, for 300 poles a license thereabouts, give or take? 200, two, yeah, like 200 poles a license is, is generally what they try for. That's the max, but they try to get up to 200 per license. Um, Jer yeah. Jeremy, Matt, I see your hand is up, sir. Yeah, I had something to bring up uh, after this item is, is done with. How about if you bring it up now then? Okay, so I just wanted to introduce uh, John Hosford, who is the new Plainfield alternate delegate. Uh, so welcome to the meeting, John, and uh, thanks for being here. Okay, and also now we were going to uh, address what David Healy had brought up concerning our 
uh, Vicuda representative. I'm I'm sorry, David. I I I it it uh, fell off my desk immediately. <laughs> it's so, okay. I mean, I don't mind doing it, but I think Janiel is the more appropriate person. And I guess I'd like a motion, make a motion to have our executive director represent um, CV Fiber on the Vicuda board. And um, that's my second. Seconded by Jeremy Matt. I see Alan has his hand up. Go ahead, Alan. You're on mute. You're muted. Much as I think this is a terrific idea, I think to take action, we have to have had it warned on the agenda. We right. can talk, we can talk about this and yeah. we can we can essentially urge Janiel to show up at the next meeting that David might have gone to. But I think the actual act of appointing her as a new representative, we can't technically do. I mean, it's it's such a small matter because it's it's I can't imagine who would have any questions about this. But according to Robert's rules, you can't take action on something that wasn't on the agenda. You can discuss it, but you can't take action. OK, actually, uh, thank you for that, Alan. Keeping I'm us sorry. on the straight. I'm sorry for the bad news. <laughs> no, no, keep keeping keeping us keeping us on the straight and narrow is is yeah. is important. Thanks, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> so we will I make still sure. Like you, Alan. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah if I'm the minutes, if if the minutes could please reflect that we will put this on the agenda for the next meeting, and we will start all over again uh, on this on this item. In the meantime, we will strongly urge Janiel to please attend the next Vicuda meeting. She does. And she does. Thank you. OK, let's uh, if we're good with construction, then let's move to the construction contract. Oh, wait, Chuck has his hands up. Go ahead, Chuck. Yeah, sorry, just, just a quick question, um, and we can take this up next time. But something to look up between now and then is whether Vicuda allows alternates and whether we should be designating an alternate as well. They do. Good point. Well done, Chuck. Thank you. Very good. OK, so this is a uh, this construction contract action expected. This is something that I had put on the agenda because I was uh, somewhat confused. And this is something that came out of our executive committee meeting that we just had half an hour ago, which is that the contract that was already approved for first light it was it was approved at the governing board level recommended up to the recommended up to the uh, governing board from the executive committee and I see now in the minutes that I hadn't seen before for the governing board that it was uh, approved by the governing board so the first light construction contract which is our second construction contractor is already approved we have we have no problems with them. Mm -hmm. I am expecting to sign uh, DocuSign the agreement any day. Been saying that for a while. Haven't seen it yet, but it's on its way. Um, so every it's already been approved. It's been reviewed. It's been to third party counsel. There really is no action here. Uh, I apologize for for having it on the uh, agenda and the confusion it might have put forward. Uh, but we are already had this discussion at the executive committee because I also had it on that agenda. So there's 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 no action be, to be taken here. We have two construction contractors. Um, we will, as soon as we are able to sign the contract that we've successfully negotiated, we will have two that will be ready to go in the spring. And Eustace, of course, is already in the field. Um, any any question on that? Again, my apologies. OK, so what we're going to do now is we're going to flip the officer's compensation and the 2023 budget because the officer's compensation, if approved or not, is part of the 2023 budget. So that that the logic is I had that also mistaken. Um, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to totally abstain from this discussion. I'm going to ask Siobhan to 
to carry the rest of this discussion here. But the only point I want to make is please, this is about the position. This isn't about the person, <laughs> right? This goes with the position, not the person. So that's what this is about. And uh, I'm going to uh, just sit back and, and hand it over to Siobhan. So Ray, do you have a motion already written for this? Ah, uh, yeah, I do. I'd like to do some background okay. first. Yep, and if go for that. it. There you and, go. And so I wanted to switch this because, as Jerry just says, it has an impact on the budget. And we've actually gone through the budget several times, once when we approved it, once we did the public hearing, and now we're in a position that in our next item, we're going to hopefully adopt our 2023 budget. But you may recall that in the proposed budget, we had a section called officer stipends, stipend and um, I had listed these these uh, stipends for the clerk, the treasurer and the board chair. And so I wanted to take those out and vote on them separately uh, to make a have a positive affirmative action with regard to doing that. OK, and so uh, the point here is that under the under Section 3072 of the CUD statute, the board governing board does have the authority to approve compensation and expenses for officers. And we're proposing that um, these three positions receive receive compensation and expenses. And I do have a I do have a motion for this. And perhaps I should put the motion up, and then we can have a discussion if you'd like. So uh, let me. And of course, what 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 would a motion be if it didn't have a couple of whereases, right? <laughs> and um, and of course, all of that is intended to provide kind of the predicate for any action that we take. So that's that's why I do that. Uh, whereas the Communications Union District Statute at Section 3072 provides for the governing board to approve compensation and expenses for officer positions, whereas the board has approved compensation for the treasurer and clerk officer positions in the past, whereas the chair, treasurer, and clerk positions have duties and responsibilities requiring knowledge, skills, and significant investments of time on behalf of CV Fiber, Whereas the executive committee recommends the governing board approve compensation for the officer positions of the governing board chair of $2,500 a month, the treasurer of $1,150 per month, and expenses of $1,200, and the clerk of $500 per month. It is moved that the governing board approve the clerk's compensation of $500 per month and the treasurer's compensation of $1,150 per month and expenses of $1,200, each beginning in January 2023. And further, the governing board approve the governing board chair's compensation of $2,500 per month to begin in May 2023 upon the election of a chair. Second. Okay, moved by Ray and seconded by Chuck. Any discussion? So perhaps I could provide just some explanation. And, and um, in the motion uh, talks about we've had we've approved compensation in the past uh, for the treasurer and the clerk. Um, and, and in the past, the clerk has uh, declined accepting any whatever, uh, notwithstanding his declination. And he's certainly free to decline it again in the future if he wants to do that. Uh, but what we were what we had provided before was um, Frankly, it wasn't worth the paperwork and the tax free uh, impact, uh, but perhaps this is uh, more fitting, frankly, for the position. But the thing I wanted to point out here is that this has to do with positions. It doesn't have to do with people. Um, each of these positions has requirements by statute and duties, and and um, uh, there's no question about whoever the chair is that they're going to have to put in a lot of time to uh, carry out the responsibilities. And I don't think we would elect anyone who wasn't willing and able to to do that. Um, you may recall that in other kind of legislative uh, situations where, for example, I think it's, I think in uh, Alan, correct me if if and I know you'll you'll have the answer to this, that typically one doesn't vote on their own. Uh, their own salaries and whatever, and it's the next elected office that comes in uh, that, uh, that that takes place. So this is why the chair is singled out. Now, it, the other two positions are not because we've already provided compensation uh, for them in the past. So this is just an ongoing um, uh, effort to compensate them for their work. Uh, I'll stop here and I see Jeremy has his hand up. 
Yeah, I, I just wanted to say that because this is about me, I do want to recuse myself from voting. Um, so I think that means that my vote goes to John in this case. Um, any other questions, comments? Alan? You're on mute, Alan. Sorry, there's too much conversation in the background. Um, I was going to ask Ray, how how were how were these how were these numbers figured out? Were there were there scales developed? Is is it is there did we look at comparables for doing this kind of work? And I'm actually asking because how do we know this is a correct, proper, whatever amount of money to uh, to provide to, the, to these officers? Uh, it could be too much. It could be too little. And I'm just wondering, moving forward, how we make decisions about whether there should be increases in the numbers whether other people maybe also should be compensated. Is there any background like that that maybe you could fill in fill in with? Well, it, the, um, uh, the, the what we have for treasurer and clerk is frankly what we had before is our historical numbers and and uh, improving upon those. And of course, we've had nothing for the, um, the chair, uh, but I, I think we all know that this is a position that's requiring at least 10 to 20 hours a week um, and even at those numbers, um, it, it's it's close to minimum wage, and certainly not not adequate enough for um, the value that we're receiving. Um, but uh, so the, basically, I came up with those numbers. Yeah, and when we were first talking about these numbers too, I remember when um, Ray and I looked at these numbers, I had done some Google, just quick Google researching on what other chairs were getting paid, like just in the marketplace, like what's typical for a, a nonprofit. And this was conservative for what I was seeing. So it didn't jump out as unreasonable to me, if anything, very conservative. So, uh, you know, I, I did to have a second look at these numbers. So if I could just have a follow-up question, these are these are considered stipends, so they're not consider. It's not considered um, a salary, but still, taxes, Social Security and Medicare taxes are going to have to be paid on this amount by somebody. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes. And who is? Do we have money in the budget to pay our share of that? No, no. We, we don't. No, it's no. It, the individual has to pay that. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it, it depends on the relationship. Um, and mm -hmm. so the third and final question is, I'm assuming the Department of Labor is not going to come after us and say, you've got an employee and therefore you have to be under a different set of, you know, tax regulations and so forth, because the statutes for CUD say that we can provide this compensation and that therefore we think this is not something the Labor Department is going to come after us for for collecting unemployment uh, tax tax uh, uh, payments and as well as the Social Security and the Medicare. Yeah, so um, in conversations what I've had with other CUDs, uh, that's not been the case that with regard to Social Security, Medicare and those things. It's kind of like the 1099 situation. Yeah, I, I was self-employed for a long time, and I'll tell you, one lives in fear of the 15% you have to pay when you're making your own money. So I, I just wanted to make sure that somebody was aware that there's a, there's a high likelihood that the feds would like to get get their 15% out of this somehow. So uh, that's that's got to be considered by somebody. Yep. Thanks, Alan. Uh, Linda? When did you say that this takes effect? Um, for the treasurer and the clerk in uh, January and for the chair in May. And why in May? Um, Again? We'll be electing we'll be electing a chair. It'll it'll have nothing to do with the incumbent, for example. We can re-elect the incumbent. Um, but this is not an unusual practice for legislative bodies. Okay. Just just asking. Thanks. Is there any further comment? 
for discussion? Are we ready for the vote? I'm not hearing any objections. Okay, so are there any objections to this motion? Are there any abstentions? I've got yeah, Jerry, 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 abs Jerry abstains, Jerry, right? Jerry abstains and Jeremy abstained. Or, well, more precisely, I transferred my vote to John Hosford. That's correct. Jeremy transferred his vote to his alternate. Do I have any other abstentions? And let me just yeah. ask a point of order, if I could at this point, and I put this to Alan. Um, is it proper for Jeremy to abstain, or can the alternate, since he is not voting, but he is present, is it appropriate for the alternate to vote in his stead, or must he just abstain? Yeah, I was wondering the same thing, Ray, and I'm not sure of the answer. I think it's okay if he votes, unless Jeremy has got a direct line to him right now, and he's saying, I would like you to, <laughs> to argue for more money. And I don't think that's the case. I'm, so just, I'm just I, wondering what's cleaner on the other end of this, if, if you know, for anybody that might look at this and... Yeah, yeah I think it... You know, in terms of the vote, it's not going to matter. So if right. the person wants to abstain, I think he should. Uh, but I don't think he has to feel that he that he cannot vote if he wants to and feels he should. Right. It's uh, and and since we're not doing a voice count or a it roll call, really it's not as significant. Oh, my camera. Anyway, so hearing no further abstentions, no objections, the motion passes. And I pass the meeting back to Jerry. Yeah, I appreciate it. Um, but it was important to take care of this outside the block now getting into the into the uh, budget. And so the next thing on the motion, uh, I'll strike that on the agenda, is the budget. And um, um, I want to bring to your attention that any changes that were made to the budget between our public hearing and to date. The, the point, one of the points here is that um, uh, the process, as you recall, is that we're now in the process of adopting the budget. In October, we approved it, et cetera, and now we're adopting the budget. Um, so let me let me uh, let me review this with you. Uh, the uh, changes include the town opera funds. It's been changed to 1.66 from the 833,000, which reflects the matching funds from the uh, from the VCBB that we're going to get. Uh, it's coming from a different pot, and so that uh, that's been added. So we've increased the obviously increased our income there by eight hundred thirty-three thousand uh, dollars in expenses. Admin services we've increased to uh, fifty thousand dollars. Admin services before was kind of like uh, the the regional planning council, and uh, now as the board has approved hiring uh, uh, some additional assistants and Sybil being among them, for example, who's with us tonight, um, uh, doing minutes and other tasks that are needed to be done to run the operation. So that's been increased uh, by uh, thirty by $20,000. Consulting has increased um, significantly here to $150,000. we are looking to, you may recall, looking to go after a loan um, from uh, the reconnect sometime after the first of the year, we're going to wind up hiring a consultant to assist us with the application process, and that's not exp that's not cheap. And so the money's been put in there. Legal we've increased because um, yeah, we just might need more legal. <laughs> um, website has been increased. Obviously, the work that we've been doing. We've, we've doubled the uh, amount there, and we can see that we're going to wind up doing even more during the course of the year. Make Ready Services has been virtually doubled. Uh, that reflects uh, the cost and the anticipated mileage and work that needs to be done over the course of the year. You may recall the report that we had earlier, the Make Ready Services that were done to date, and it was in, with the $800,000 range, right? Well, we have a full year in front of us, and we're going to be doing 500 plus miles of that work. Um, and it may seem kind of, go ahead, I'm sorry, did I hear a question? What's PMCM? Oh, I'm sorry, it's Project Manager, Construction Manager. Who's that? Um, it, there's, there may be some additional work that we're required to have or to have to pay for okay. in that area. 
Um, let's see here. And and that no that's pre-construction, right? It, in, yeah, I just didn't a, know what the term was. <laughs> yeah, this is the this is the one that we're going to be paying, like NRTC, for example, in the construction area, fiber construction, um, the uh, labor for this, the the mileage. What what happened here was a reconciliation of the mileage that is anticipated to be done um, in the budget, and what are the changes? And that's that's it. So. So the reserves have uh, gone up by $177,000 or gone up by $70,000. $70, and obviously our total expenses have gone up uh, a little bit as well. So that is, that. those are the changes to the budget. And I do have a motion, let's see here, that I'd like to stick into the chat room. There's a couple of whereas's, it won't take that long. Ah. Uh, Thanks for your patience here. Whereas the governing board approved a CV Fiber 2023 budget on 11 October and forwarded to the legislative bodies of its member communities as required by statute, whereas the governing board held a public hearing on the budget at its regular 9 November board meeting as required by the statute, whereas the executive committee recommends the governing board adopt the CV Fiber 2023 budget dated 22 November. It's move. The governing board adopt the CV Fiber 2023 budget dated 22 November 2022. Second. I heard Jeremy Matt on that one, I believe. Thank you, Jeremy. So is there... Additional discussion on this budget. We have walked through all of the paces uh, and I believe checked every box that needed to be checked for the, for the, for this budget. Is there additional discussion? Okay. Hearing none, is there are there any opposed to this motion? Any abstentions from this motion? Right. Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Let's uh, let, let's let's spend this money and get some fiber hanging. Uh, so now I'd like to move into the discussion about the operations manager. Oh, Ray, sir. I'd like to have the discussion on the operations manager. Oh well, I didn't get there yet. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. I was I was I was going to offer Janiel to start the discussion, but Ray, no. go ahead. Yeah, it, it might seem self-serving if for GDL to to do that to get a look for assistance. And what I what I wanted to say was this: uh, we're now in the pre-construction phase for another six months plus. We're in the initial stages of the construction phase, which is going to accelerate to two contractors in the spring for the next three years and require mere materials and warehousing. We're entering the operations phase, which will begin in Q1 and last forever. Unfortunately, the laws of physics prevent Janiel from being everywhere and doing everything at once. We need help, and we have the position in the budget we just approved. We're asking the board to authorize advertising to fill the position, and the goal will be to get someone on board in February, and I do have a motion. So I'm going to put the motion in the, um, in the chat room here. And... Um, Whoops, that's the I'm not doing I'm not sharing my screen. We've been through that. Okay. Let's see if that's there. Move the governing board approve advertising for and filling the position of operations manager and authorize the executive committee to manage the advertising and hiring process and make a recommendation of an individual to the board to fill the position. Second. Second. David got it. <laughs> oh, I think David Healy got that one for the for the second. Yeah, I you heard can tell David. how anxious I am for this position. <laughs> yeah, I, I can do what I'm doing. Yeah, David. David has been uh, describing what he's going through with Callus, and and he he he's become the point man there for Callus with everybody asking questions about what's going to happen next and who does what and how do I do that, and uh, yeah, I like the laws of physics explanation. I think that was that was quite good. Quite accurate, uh, Janiel. Is there anything that you you want to add to this discussion? And I don't find it self-serving, by the way. Please. Well, I mean, we're we're all working really hard. I mean, it's it's everybody who is, and our, our the business is changing very rapidly. 
Uh, we need somebody to uh, to fill the gap both for construction phase and operations phase. And we're going to be, as you said, in construction and operations at the same time. So this this person is a liaison between our warehousing, construction management, um, and myself planning a development committee, and uh, and construction management and RTC. So this this will be a construction role as well as an operations role. And um, this is absolutely a full-time job. We've talked about doing it as limited services, but chances are limited limited in this case is actually going to last for a, for a while. Maybe it, it might not be considered traditional limited services and that I foresee that this <clears throat> position is going to be needed for a long time. So our, our intention is to do what we've done before with having a, a, a small group of folks that will will um, manage the outreach for this position. And then we will go through the process that we've set up previously, basically the one that we use to hire. Janiel will do something extremely similar uh, that seemed to have worked very well for us. And we will mimic that process um, and we'll see. It's the uh, it's the holiday season, um, so we'll we'll see you know when this begins to take off. But we will start moving forward on this. Um, if if this if this is approved, we will start moving up forward on this basically immediately. So, is there additional discussion? David went. I see your hand is up, sir. Uh, yeah, I mean, this position sounds sounds great. I'm wondering, though, um, longer term or medium term, if there's a, a staffing plan um, and kind of a timeline, if I can't remember if that was part of the business plan way back, but um, just to make sure that as as these needs kind of increase, I imagine uh, with with continuing to build and then bring on customers and everything, there's probably going to be a long term or we don't want to get behind the curve, I guess, like having to hire people in a rush, no. but making sure that we've we planned ahead. Yeah, no, you're you're absolutely right. And and there 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 are a number of positions that are in our business plan. And also I'll add to that that there is a number of uh, responsibilities that will be taken on by our contractors um, as well uh, when they when they get engaged at at, at Waitsfield. Um, David, I see you have your hand up. Yeah, one of the one of the things that is going to have to be taken care of in the next year, two years, and then ongoing forever, is data management, and that's sort of an operations function. And it's both, you know, the GIS data that's all been created. Um, Wait till Champlain Telecom is going to manage the network for us, but we better have a good handle on what it is. And then the IRS requires us to have a GASPI capital uh, inventory. We have to know how much money was spent on what capital equipment and a plan for how it gets de depreciated and replaced. So there's a lot of things coming up in the next year that we can't, We can, well, first off, I, I can't keep on working at the level I'm working at, but it, it is some specific functions that need um, attention quickly. Thank, thank you, thank you, David. Appreciate that. Uh, David Went, did that get to your question, sir? Um, yeah, I think so. I don't know if there if at some point we'll revisit the the kind of staffing plan and and timeline for as like given the the schedule that we currently have for scale up. Um, so yeah, but yeah, maybe just something to consider for the future. I can speak to that for just briefly a little bit more, and that is that we would love to have this position um, filled by the first quarter and um, give preference to maybe uh, re resumes that are received by around Valentine's Day. That's what I envision. And then the the other staffing that I, en I envision that we would do next is a public engagement uh, manager and then somebody who has um, uh, knowledge in fin finances or some sort of a CFO type role to help us with audits toward the end of next year. So. Um, I, I would envision operations manager first quarter, um, public engagement uh, manager second quarter or so when we're really starting to get busy with the lighting and customers, and then um, and then toward the end of next year, the 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 finance folk. David Healy, your hand is yeah, up, sir. The the um, the business plan we had done by NRTC has staffing in it phased in over the next two to three years. I think there's like five positions anyway. 
and they come on over time based on you know the need and the and the revenue stream that we may or may not have at the time. So, but is there a detailed you know plan staffing plan? No, we have a a budgeting plan or model business model that has them s slotted, but we certainly haven't scoped out the um, the other positions other than operations, and we've got a draft on the outreach public affairs person. And I would add that if there is anyone who feels they have expertise in this area, uh, we we would be uh, happy to work with you on helping us figure all of this out. Um, but as it stands right now, it's it's uh, it's unfolding as as Janiel has described, basically. Additional discussion. All right. Oh, Henry, go ahead, sir. Yeah, I'm just a little curious about operations manager. When I think of operations manager, I think of something that's operating, not something that's being constructed. And and um, operations manager would be involved in not only the day-to-day -day operations, but also the the monitoring of the system that's up, you know, um, SLAs and all that, and you know, overviewing the work of Waitsfield Telecom, et cetera. So I'm trying to understand how the construction gets rolled into an op operations manager's role. Um, a couple ways. Um, we, we even though we're in construction, um, we are also getting ready to be an operator, and there are a lot of due diligence items that must be considered as we're getting as we are becoming operational. Like just today, the 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 overlap of regulatory between VoIP and traditional telephone, like that's an operations question that goes to how we're even constructing and laying out the the network. Um, so it is there is a there is an overlap with construction, but also we must get ahead of operations now. Uh, Ray, I see you have your hand up. And also David Healy in the chat had mentioned that NRTC is our construction manager. I mean, that is that is their that is their role. Uh, go ahead, Ray, please. Yeah, no, that's that's one of the points I wanted to make. Uh, and first, uh, there is a job description that is almost completed. Secondly, the NRTC is our construction manager. Third, we have a warehouse that they're not managing our warehouse. We need someone to kind of oversee that particular aspect of whatever construction is going on. But for the most part, it has more to do with the operations and the operator and the ISP, et cetera. Um, and other duties as assigned, Henry, um, because there's just too much, too much darn stuff going on. So uh, don't, don't be taken by the title so much. Uh, uh, but the you know the executive committee will work through all of this uh, prior to the advertisement uh, going out. Thank you. Additional discussion. All right. Oh, I I think we're ready to vote on this motion. Yes. Looking around, I see nodding heads. Okay. Are there any opposed to the motion? Any abstentions? Hearing none, the motion passes unanimously. Thank you. And uh, this is this 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 is part of part of the growing pains here is uh, to have to go through another another hiring episode. <laughs> okay. Um, so we had an a. a, a, a Executive committee meeting, a special executive committee meeting at 5.30 this evening, and we spent a lot of that meeting talking about our privacy policy, and we, 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 uh, we reached a place um, in our development of that privacy policy that I would like uh, Alan to explain to folks where we are. Um, I'm not expecting that there is going to be an action tonight based on the discussions that we had at the executive committee. But Alan, if you would please take a couple of minutes and let folks know where we are and please uh, start off with the heart of what is in our privacy policy. I'm even going to go a little bit further back from that because people need to know that 
the policy committee and also Janiel and to some extent Linda um, and I have been working on various documents that we made. I made a list back in May of documents that we really needed to have in place before we went live as an operating system. And we've we've been we've been attacking that list, but of course everything is moving faster than we think it's going to move. And we realized that we had to have a lot of these documents ready to go before we actually turned on systems and started taking subscribers and all that kind of stuff. And the privacy policy was one of those things that we know we want to have and we want to have it ready uh, for the time when we actually do start uh, taking on customers. So there's an element of moving quickly on this, uh, but there's also we recognize a very strong need to make sure we get things right. And I think around privacy, we all recognize it's a somewhat touchy, difficult subject, especially when it involves digital information uh, going back and forth and high speeds around the world kind of stuff. So what we did was we started by saying we want to we wanted to develop a privacy policy that really was something that the average person could read and could understand and would not have to look and scroll endlessly and look how long this is and determine I'm never going to read this because I won't understand it. So we came up with a one page policy that I think does what we want it to do in terms of simplicity. But when we brought it up before the executive committee tonight, before this meeting, there were some things that were mentioned that really do need more review. We can't go quite as fast as maybe we would have liked to be able to get this thing done. So what, what I'm asking tonight is instead of making a motion that we approve this policy, or even that we send it back to either the policy committee or to the executive committee, I think it might be best to not for the board not to take any action except to generally ask the appropriate committees, and I think at this point they really are the policy and executive committees, to continue additional work, to polish the policy a little bit further, to have it reviewed by legal counsel, which has not been formally done yet, and then ensure that it's congruent with crowd fiber policies and operations. Um, I think there there were some holes that were pointed out in our prior meeting that we really do need to address before we should bring uh, a policy before the full board. So uh, I guess what I'm asking is actually no action other than if somebody has questions or if, or if you want to discuss what's what's going on uh, with with this document or other documents, we could have Janiel and or Siobhan or Linda talk about that. Thank you, Alan. That was uh, that was really well done. Uh, Henry has his hand up. Go ahead, Henry. Yeah. Uh, in addition to the policy in general, I think this gives us a market differentiation uh, capability. So I think there's added benefits there, where we're not going to be selling their information and and the you know the commercial providers are. And uh, so I think it has marketing advantage as well as uh, respect for people's privacy. Excellent Thank point. You. Excellent. Thank you. Additional discussion? We will revisit this issue, undoubtedly. Thank you, Alan. And thanks to everybody that's been that's been working on this. We, we got to get it just right. And we will. Sure. Uh, I'm looking now for an update on the outreach and our website. And I don't know, Janiel, will I start with you and we'll we'll move on over to Linda and others? Sure. How's that work? That's that's fine. So as far as uh, outreach and um, website, there's a couple pieces here. Um, we retained Crawford Agency to do some initial market research for us, um, and they've provided some initial personas and are continuing on some interviews for 
potential subscribers in the in the in the district. So they're interviewing 30 people. We expect to have some sort of a report within the next week, uh, perhaps this week. I have my next status update call with them tomorrow. So um, they'll they'll give me more detailed ETAs, but I do expect to have some market research research details um, by this week. And then last week they provided us some initial personas for how they envision um, our, our subscribers might be best marketed to. Um, and we had a follow up call with them because we, you know, frankly, it was a, a little uh, it was a little um, off from what we thought it we wanted it to be. So we um, called a, a meeting with them and um, gave them our feedback on what we thought the personas might do for us um, in a better way than what they had presented them. So um, that's where we are with with Crawford. Um, Jeremy, did you want to ask something on that? Uh, you're on mute. Yeah, just noticed. Um, I'm sorry, I, I have zero marketing or public outreach knowledge. What are exactly our personas? Yeah, OK, so and and um, I, I'm also learning the marketing process as we go. So personas are, yeah, personas are, this is who you're talking to. You you talk to uh, a group of people differently depending on what their preferences, okay. likes are. Um, and so, for instance, um, is somebody who's yeah, it's, it's, it's 70 and lives in a rural area and drive, has three cars is going to be talked to differently according to marketing. Yeah, you know, who am I to say? Uh, then somebody who's 25 living in the city who rides a motorcycle, for instance. Okay, so you 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 collect data based on demographics. Yeah. So um so their the marketing agency is 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 teaching us how to talk to and um and and get subscribers on how to who to talk to how to talk to them. Um, it's it, it's marketing research essentially, and then from that will be derived a long and short term public engagement and marketing plan. So you need to develop who your personas are first, and then from there you develop a plan. So we're we're in the initial phases now. Um, so so uh, the other piece of this is going live, crowd fiber, going live. Um, we have been working tirelessly the work that Chuck and Linda have put into this amazing they have put so much um time talent skill into uh this interface and it it, it is it looks great um Linda developed a testing um platform and we tested the system and um Chuck has been in close communication with the the folks at crowd fiber to fix bugs so we've identified so many issues, some of which were deal killers. We can't go live without this because it it calls into question the trust of the system. And if it called into question the trust of the system and CV fiber, it was a deal killer. We won't go live with it. If it was just a, something that was aesthetic or an annoyance, perhaps, then we'll let it go. It's a it's a it's not a must have. It's something, a formatting issue to repair. So uh, cr crowd fiber has been responsive. In addition, we've pulled in um, Crawford to help us integrate where, where crowd fiber can't or isn't able to do it quickly enough. Um, and together, we're working out the bugs as well as interface usability um, and user friendliness. That's that's very helpful. Thank you, Linda or Chuck. Is there anything you would like to add to this discussion? Chuck, go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Um, I guess what 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 I would add is uh, when it comes to integrations with third party software vendors and where you're trying to make as seamless uh, an experience as possible for your customers, um, there's always the out of the box way the software works. And there's the way you want the software to work based on your knowledge of your own customers. As a concrete example here, uh, CrowdFiber offers a step in their flow where after you enter your address, you can drag the, a pin on a map uh, that says, hey, the, this address was wrong. Um, my house is actually over here. Um, 
As it turns out, our operator is not even going to use that if a, if a user does that. They're they're still just going to base it off of whatever address they've entered and and give them a call and be like, how many turns past apple orchards do I need to make to get to your house? Uh, and so, you know, um, maybe a very useful tool if you're building out in, uh, you know, in Rome, Georgia, which is densely, you know, densely populated, but not something we needed. So a lot of what we have run into are actually not necessarily just bugs, although we found a fair number of those as well, uh, but they're actually just the way their tool was designed and differences in what we want for our customer base based on what their tool is designed. So after going through that, the back and forth begins of, okay, CrowdFiber, what can you actually do for us to make some changes here so that the experience is more ideal for our customers and our needs? And some of those things they'll be able to do quickly, some of those things they may never do, and there'll be some in between where we wait several months, but you know we will eventually get it. So right now, a lot of that back and forth is, is occurring with CrowdFiber uh, to get that integration off the ground as seamlessly as possible. Um, we know some, issues we don't like that we are going to have to continue to live with for some time, uh, but they have been responsive um, and have uh, uh, you know, taken a pass at resolving the ones we identified as, hey, we're not willing to live with this at all before we go live. Um, there is still work to be done. Uh, you know, now that they've taken a pass at, at trying to resolve some of those issues, we have to go back and retest them. They won't have gotten them all perfect. Um, and in fact, Linda found uh, two today that uh, weren't quite resolved to our satisfaction. So it will go back over to them for a, another round of development work. Um, so that's where we stand with CrowdFiber. Uh, best case scenario, there's no way this thing will be up and live before probably a week from today. And even that is probably aggressive, particularly with uh, approaching holiday schedules and people taking time off and, and what have you. So um, that's that's kind of where we stand right now. Uh, it's worth noting we're still only trying to get pre-registration live. There's going to be a whole nother round of work that has to be done when we want to actually start selling subscriptions through this tool. Um, um, and so, uh, you know, more, much, much more to come. Uh, and thank you, everyone, for your patience on it. Well, thank you for taking this on and 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 doing it the way, the way that you have been, and to the to the to the degree that you have been. Linda, go ahead, please. So far, we have only been working with CrowdFiber, very little with Crawford. We don't have any branding from them, for example, to put into the into the website or any promotional materials that I have seen. Have you, Janine? No. Oh, no. So uh, most of the work has been done by Chuck and myself with the help of uh, CrowdFiber to try to, and most of the bugs we have found have been in CrowdFiber, CrowdFiber. So um, I would say we probably have eight bugs outstanding or so that uh, are keeping us from going live. And that's, I that's tested exactly only, right. I only tested two today and they both failed so far. So we are not there yet. I wish we were going to be there in time for the construction uh, press event, which I hope Janiel will talk about. Um, but I, I don't know if we can guarantee that. So <laughs> Chuck says nope. No, because we no. still need to do the second round of testing. OK, so yep. we, we gave them a bunch of problems. Now we got to fix it. Now we got to test it again because we don't want to cross our fingers on this. We need to make sure that it, it, it has been resolved in the user experience. Yep. But, but that's okay. The timing is okay. It's not. It's not problematic. It's. It's. It. It's. It's the best we can do. And I, I think it's here. important that the this is our outward looking experience to the customer. We want to make sure that we look reliable. The website will prove whether or not we are reliable to the very first contact with our customers. Point taken. Additional discussion on Linda, your hands back up. No. Nope. Additional, trying to get it down. additional discussion on outreach and website update. Well, outreach. I mean, do we want to talk about the pub, the the event now, the the presser event? Why not? Yes. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So this is super exciting. Actually, Christine Hallquist has offered to speak at our press event next week. We are going to be holding a press event um, next Wednesday. That's 1221 um, 
from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Now, David Healy has reserved the Callis Town Hall from 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock. So that gives us an hour on either end of the press event. Um, we will be uh, we will have a lectern and Eustace and NRTC trucks have been reserved to get out there. So we'll have our construction presence to announce the beginning of CV Fibers construction. We have officially started construction in Callis. We have done 9,000 feet of strand and lash. Um, and we will talk about this at the press event. We will give notice to press um, partners media partners in the region. Uh, VCBB has offered to do a press release as well. And um, so we'll get additional press um, exposure from VCBB. We'll invite legislators, local and state legislators as well. So this event will be a, uh, a thank you to everybody, everybody who has made this possible. It'll be a, a reach out to um, what is still needed um, that is that we've we've come to almost 50% of our expected funds um, through ARPA funds, but we need more money. Um, and and also, it'll be an opportunity for everyone to to get together and conglomerate in a in a physical setting rather than you know we're always seeing each other on Zoom. So please, if you can make it out there during the press event, it would be lovely to see everyone and and meet folks in person. And, and there, there'll be more notices being spread around as as the details firm up. Yeah. So John Walters is creating a press advisory um, initially, and I will share that with um, that should be done by tomorrow, I believe. And I'll share that with the governing board. Excellent. Uh, we have one more item on the agenda, and that's the subscription terms and conditions and as we get into that, I just want to forewarn people about what it is that they're actually looking at, right? This is this is the outline of what the content will be on our website when folks just open it up and what do they see as far as what do we offer? That, that that's that's what we're talking about here. We're not talking about clicking on the document that is the fine print that's going to be 30 pages of terms and conditions, right? This is not the 30 page scenario. This is the this is this is going to be the the content that will be prettied up, you know, made into something that's easily digestible and something that is um, uh, draws people in and makes them, you know, understand what it is that they want to select. Now, is this is this going to come from Ray? Yes, or is this coming from Janiel? From Ray. Okay, go ahead, Ray, please. You're on mute, no, Ray. You're, you're on mute. He wants to be on mute. He wants this to be sign language. <laughs> I'm, I'm just going to sign this then. We're just, you know, I'm, I know you're tired of hearing from me. Okay, so... Uh, we set subscription rates. Those, okay, those are done. But there are so many other details involved with this that they need to get um, attention. And so on, on 28 November, the executive committee approved an outline of these details so that uh, from these from this information, websites uh, can be developed, pages can be developed, and, um, and, and information put into crowd fiber that's important to be in the crowd fiber. <laughs> so <clears throat> I just want to give you an example. And this isn't a great example, but this is this is EC Fibers um, subscription service plans and pricing, and there's a whole a whole bunch of information in here, you know, that's above and beyond subscription rates, right? And there's just a whole bunch of stuff here. And then there's another page that they have, and I think it's this one here, exterior connections, which has. Um, yeah, this is live, not Memorex. Come on, here we go. There's a whole bunch of other information here uh, that also needs to be incorporated into our particular offerings and stuff. So what we did was we pulled from these pages and other pages. What are the what are the you know set uh, bits of information that we need to get some agreement on? And and the and the um, uh, uh, the executive committee found agreement on these particular items. So, for example, uh, there, there's not going to be any 
contracts. We're not going to execute contracts with with uh, uh, home home users, right, for uh, service. Now there there are terms of service uh, that Waitsfield has and others, you know, and and you can read those, but nobody ever reads them. But there there will be terms of service, and 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 we will be adopting some terms of service. Um, there there well may be commercial contracts because. Uh, the nature of the service that's being provided to them, the cost of the equipment, the cost of the service, the level of service that they're looking for. There could be contracts with them, but uh, there will be no contracts with uh, with uh, people from home, at home. The, the speeds are symmetrical, right? Okay, we, we, we agree on that. There's unlimited data. There's no caps on the data, right? We're not going to put caps on data. Uh, home installation costs, 99 bucks. Um, we might have a promotion package that waives that fee that kind of, kind of encourages people to sign up early, right? So that they can uh, waive that fee. Uh, and any any installation cost for commercial is going to be um, dependent upon the package that they're they're buying because the equipment is so expensive. Uh, aerial connections of 400 feet or less. There's no charge. You know, we have a contract with Waitsfield Telecom that says the you know the, 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 the typical drop is going to cost us n. Okay, 400 feet or less, it's going to cost us in. Um, over 400 feet, it's a dollar per foot. Uh, and this is a consistent kind of a thing that EC Fiber and, and, and other, uh, other CUDs are do. Uh, payment plans, um, if, if there's a, an installation cost that costs over so much money, um, and, that was, and that was something that EC Fiber has here, for example, they, they have a payment plan. So that we can assist people in getting to the and getting to um, uh, get, getting the service going, we'll we'll adopt a payment plan. Conduit, if we can use existing conduit, uh, we'll do that. If we can't, uh, then it's the customer's responsibility for the conduit installation. They'll get the 400 feet of fiber free, but thereafter there'll be a charge of a dollar per foot. For example, so this is these are the level of details that needed to be incorporated so that somebody can develop those pages that we saw in EC Fiber, for example, and hopefully better looking than that. Uh, telephone activation fee, uh, home phone service, blah blah blah. So these are these are those details. Are there more details? Oh yeah, there's going to be more details, but th this is kind of the basic stuff. And uh, we'll get back to you, I think, after the executive committee is, after we brought some more stuff to the executive committee as we discover it um, as we go. So happy to answer any questions. Um, but uh, this is where we're settled now, and, and hopefully this is going to feed Linda and Chuck for their work. And maybe it's maybe it's um, uh, Crawford for helping us develop those pages that in, in marketing and branding and all that other stuff. So it looks better than this. Please. Uh, questions, comments? So we just want to give you an update of where we're at. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I see a hand up, but I don't know who's next. Oh, David went. Go ahead, David. Um, yeah, I just have a quick question about the. So some of that information is is pretty self explanatory, and other pieces get into some technical depth that I imagine the average customer won't might have further questions on or need some explanation about. Um, yep. Is that part of, I mean, in terms of information about subscription, is there a, a direct line to uh, one of our kind of service providers or a, a call center agent who would be able to talk to people about what some of these concepts are and what those costs are and all that stuff? So um, the short answer is going to be yes. Uh, the longer answer is that um, somebody indicates they want a subscription Somebody comes out and actually does a survey to identify exactly what's required. Is it aerial? Is it underground? Can we use what they have? Blah, 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 all those things. So uh, that's the case. And, and hopefully we will have a lot more description that's consumable uh, on the website. Uh, we, as we already have, David, we already have the conduit specs, for example. So that's one of those things for uh, that um, that we've answered that question right now anyway. And I think we're also putting up, if we haven't done it yet, uh, the names of some vendors of people who have, do will do conduit uh, trenching work uh, for customers. Uh, we're not recommending them, but people have stepped up and said that they can do the work. Linda? 
I think to answer David's questions, we need an operations manager. <laughs> Point taken. Point taken, Linda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the good news is most of these calls are going to go to Waitsfield. Right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Or David Healy. It, it, it's a toss up right now. <laughs> so, I have an unlisted cell phone number. As, as, you can, as, as you can see from today's agenda and how we've moved around on all these different topics, you know, we're, we're just in multiple areas at the same time. Um, we, uh, I, I would like to say that we're not quite playing whack-a-mole, uh, but we are definitely, we are definitely uh, touching multiple disciplines at the same time um, and keeping ourselves very busy. Linda, go ahead, please. Um, I just wanted to make a point on the subscription terms and conditions. Uh, we are working a, on a legal document that really is like 40 pages long, I think, um, talking about um, what we expect from our customers and what they can expect from us. So that is going to be one of the things that is um, necessary for the customer to accept if they want to get service with us. Yeah, that's that term of terms of service that was mentioned on the very top thing there that uh, that we're working on. Um, but it it'll be it'll be a pretty much um, kind of weights fields as the as the underpinning for that. I expect. Yeah, we're not reinventing the wheel here, but we do want to make sure that it fits CV fiber. Is there additional discussion there? Well, I want to thank everybody for all that you do. We're we're moving along, and it's a uh, it's a team effort. All the, all those shoulders to the wheel are uh, are making it happen. So thank you very much. Thank you, everybody. And uh, do I need a motion to adjourn? I think everybody should show up for the press event and get some glory. Get some glory. <laughs> now, Jerry, you may not need a motion to adjourn. When everybody leaves, though, you're you're going to be all alone. So it's over. Know. Yes. Well, uh, <laughs> Look, I think we're we're, go we're going to end the meeting. I am going to stop recording and have a good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You.